I have introduced House Res 57. This, these are articles of impeachment on President Biden uh, for abuse of power in regards to his, his willingness to use his position of power to aid his son, Hunter Biden, and their business dealings. I've also introduced another article of impeachment on President Biden, which is HRS 597. This has to do with the national security crisis that President Biden has created with regards to the extreme threat at the southern border. I've introduced House Res 598, articles of impeachment on President Biden in regards to the failure in Afghanistan and I've introduced House Res 596, uh, articles of impeachment on President Biden for the COVID eviction moratorium and his willingness to use his position uh, to try to do what he shouldn't be doing. We have three branches of power. Now, this is not an issue that is just important to me. This is an issue that's important to the American people. You see, the American people in polling just recently there's a range between 60% of Americans that say that Joe, Joe Biden should be impeached, but it goes as high as 83% of Republicans think President Biden deserves to be impeached, 58% of independents, and 40% of Democrats agreeing that President Biden should be impeached for his failures to the American people as president. Let's talk about some of those failures. We can talk about the border alone. You see, here we have, and let's just talk about criminals coming across the border. U.S. Border Patrol has apprehended 9,728 illegal aliens with criminal records just in fiscal year 2021 in comparison to only 2,438 in 2020. This is a 325.8% increase in migrant encounters. It's up to 1.7 million migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border in fiscal year 2021, which ended in September. This is a massive increase in President Biden's failures to provide security for the American people. Also, Border Patrol agents arrested 53 illegal aliens with sex-related criminal convictions, and many of them had prior convictions for crimes involving a minor. In the same period in 2020, agents apprehended 58. In 2019, they apprehended 58 in total. 55, I'm sorry, 55 in 2020, 58 in 2019. But 353 in 2021, that is a massive increase. Let's talk about these types of convictions. These convictions include forcible sexual assault, sexual assault of a child under 14, sexual conduct with a person under 13, statutory rape, second degree sexual assault of a child, and lewd acts with a minor. Del Rio sector in Texas, they have seen 3,166% increase in arrest of convicted sex offenders compared to the same time frame last year. This is a threat to the American people, and Joe Biden is failing on his job. We could go on and on with the statistics and the numbers, but I think plenty of people have done that already. So let's talk about what is the presidential oath of office. Joe Biden swore an oath. He said, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States, and I will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States and he is failing to uphold his oath. You see, Article 4, Section 4, says that the U.S. guarantees each state against invasion. Joe Biden is failing the American people by refusing to uphold the law and the Constitution. But Afghanistan is where it really hurt. You see, Article 3, sex, Section 3, Joe Biden could be guilty of treason. Our law says that levying war against the U.S., adhering to the enemies of the U.S., and giving aid and comfort is treason. President Biden did that by arming the Taliban with our taxpayer-funded U.S. equipment and weapons. He abandoned Americans in Afghanistan and seems to have no interest in getting them back. And only worse, he failed to ignore the intel that there was going to be an ISIS bomber, and 13 of our soldiers were killed. 
I asked this committee to bring my articles of impeachment forward in hearings and markup. And I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Chairman. Uh, March 25th, Joe Biden criticizes the Georgia election law. Three months later, the Department of Justice challenges it. September 1st, Joe Biden criticizes the new pro-life law in Texas. Eight days later, the Department of Justice challenges it. September 29th, the political organization asks President Biden to involve the FBI in local school board issues. Five days later, the Department of Justice does just that. Mr. Attorney General, was it just a coincidence that your memo came five days after the National School Boards Association letter went to the President? So we are concerned about violence and threats of violence across the board against school officials, against... Um, Is there any connection, board? Mr. Attorney General, with the school board letter and then five days later your memo to, uh, uh, regarding school board issues? Obviously, the letter, which uh, was public and asked for assistance from the Justice Department, was brought to our attention, and it's a relevant factor in... Who gave you the letter? I'm sorry? How did you become aware of the letter? Who gave it to you? I read about the letter um, in the news. That's how I read about it. But the White House told you to write the memo. No one in the White House spoke to me about the memo at all. But I, I am sure, um, I was, at least I certainly would believe, that the uh, White House um, communicated its concerns about the letter to the Justice Department, and that is Oh, that's my next question. Did you or anyone at the Justice Department discuss the memo with White House personnel or with anyone at the White House before the memo was sent? I did not. I don't know whether anyone discussed the memo. I am sure that the communication from the National Association of School Boards um, was uh, discussed between, uh, between the White House and the Justice Department, and that's perfectly appropriate just as... Who were those individuals? Who at the White House talked with? Who at the Justice Department? I don't know. I don't know. Did they talk to you? Did someone call I, you? I, I think I've answered. Them? No one from the White House spoke to me. But the White House is um, perfectly appropriately concerned about violence, just like they're concerned about violence in the streets, and they make uh, requests of the Justice Department in that respect, just like they're concerned about Did you about or anyone at the Department of Justice communicate with the American Federation of Teachers, the National Education Association, the National School Boards Association prior to your memo? I did not. I don't know. I don't know if anyone else at the Justice Department did? I don't know. You know, if it, did, did you or anyone at the Justice Department communicate with those, those organizations, AFT, NEA, National School Board Association, prior to the letter? Did you help the National School Board Association put together the letter? Again, not. I, I have had no such conversations. I would be surprised if, if that happened, but I don't know. Will FBI agents be attending local school board meetings? No, FBI agents will not be attending local school board's meetings, and there's nothing in this memo to suggest that. I want to, again, try to be clear. This memo is about violence and threats well, of violence. Let me just point it's out, not, the same day you did the memo, the Justice Department sent out a press release, Monday, October 24th, or excuse me, Monday, October 4th, 2021. The press release says, Justice Department addresses violent threats against school officials and teachers. Now, you said earlier to a question from one of my colleagues on the Republican side that parents aren't domestic terrorists, we're not going to treat them that way. But let me just read from the third paragraph. According to the Attorney General's memorandum, the Justice Department will launch a series of additional efforts in the coming days designed to address the rising criminal conduct directed towards school personnel. Those efforts are extended, expected to include a creation of a task force consisting of representatives from the Department's Criminal Division, Civil Rights Division, Executive Office of U.S. Attorneys, the FBI, the Community Relations Service, Office of Justice Programs, and the National Security Division. Now, I find that interesting. You said there's no way you're going to be treating parents as domestic terrorists, but you got the National Security Division in a press release regarding your memo that day. My memo does not mention the National Security Division. It's addressed to the I didn't the say it did. I said the press release accompanying your memo that day from the Department of Justice, right here it is, I'm going to be as clear talks about as the I National Security be. Division this being not, part of this effort. I want to be clear as I can be. This is not about what happens inside school board meetings. It's only about threats of violence and violence aimed at school officials, school employees, and teachers. First sentence of your memo, the very first, first sentence, you said, in recent months there's been a disturbing spike in harassment, intimidation, threats of violence. Yes. When did you first review the data showing this so-called disturbing uptick? So I read the letter, and we have been seeing over time threats. Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't ask you. So you read the letter. That's, that's your source? So let me be clear. This is not a prosecution or an investigation. Is there investigation. some study, some effort, some investigation someone did that said there's been a disturbing uptick, or you just take the words of the National School Board Association? When the National School Board Association, which represents thousands of school boards and school board members, says that there are these kind of threats, 
when we read in the newspapers reports of threats of violence, when that is in the context of threats of violence. The source for this, for the very.